Mike, the Carnival 2016 uh, gets into to full swing soon. Uh, how would you assess the strength of your team this time around? Uh, I've got a couple of really nice horses, especially the, the fresh ones that have come in. Um, I mean, numbers-wise, we sort of late 20s and counting. It goes up and it goes down. Um, but realistically, you know, probably six or seven horses. Let's put it that way. You know, a lot of the same old, same old, the, you know, anaerobia and um, sand showers and, you know, they, you know, they all should be getting attendance awards really by now. But, you know, those, those type of horses, they always earn you a few dollars, funny enough, but um, uh, realistically, you know, there's five, six, seven fresh, uh, nice horses. So you might be hanging your hat in terms of big prizes on the fresh horses, and I'll just pick out a few if I can that we're looking forward to seeing out here in the carnival. And I think that it's fair to say that everyone who's got their eyes on Maidan is looking forward to seeing Mubta Hitch out here again after what he achieved in the UAE Derby last year. How is he? He's good. Um, he's had a real good freshen up since, um, since America. Um, and he will run later part in the season, you know, really at the end of the day. It's, um, the build up is for World Cup night. Whatever happens in between happens. But um, that's where we're looking is, is at, at the World Cup. And ha given what he achieved last year, how much is your sort of approach to his training and his campaign this year? How much is, are you trying to mirror almost to a T what happened last year? Because he was so good uh, on Derby night that you kind of want to emulate that, I guess, don't you? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually almost a different approach because he was younger, you know, less mature than he is now. Um, he's probably a, a, a bigger, tougher horse, but, you know, the thing is, is that um, he's very experienced now, so... Uh, you know, we can, whereas then we were almost trying to prove him, trying to qualify him, now we do. So take a slightly different approach and just really, but he's a tough horse, you know, he can take racing, he can take a lot of work mm. and um, he'll get both. And, uh, you know, as I say, it'll all be geared get around World Cup. So what can we look forward to seeing from Mubta in 2016? Is he a different horse in any way than, than 2015? He's a, he's a stronger horse, he's much more settled. Uh, mentally more, more, more mature. Um, you know, I'm giving give him two runs, the fire break and the Mac Doom Challenge and then the World Cup. Uh, do you think when you, when, I mean, a lot of times with good horses, we say how much improvement is there, etc. And, and sometimes they reach such a high level that they, they sort of not plat, pl well, plateau off, I, I guess, but flatline. Do you think he has sort of extended that this sort of improvement graph into this year? Yeah, well, he's made the weight for the expected weight for age improvement. Mm. You know, one can see that in his body weight. Right. Um, he's one of those rare horses, or few horses, that do make weight for age improvement. And how excited are you by him personally to, to see him this year? Look, you don't get too excited because you know how it is in this game. You live every day by the day because things can go wrong tomorrow, and then it's it's all up in smoke, mm. and, and everyone's in tears. So we uh, don't you, get ahead of ourselves, and we wait for World, World Cup night. At this stage, things are going well, but. Um, you know, it, you know, things change overnight mm. in this industry. That's our job in the media, to get ahead of ourselves and, and big these horses yeah, up. We, we will you do You blow that. them up and we have to deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to Ertajal, who's a turf horse, a Cape Derby winner in South Africa. What can you tell us about Ertajal? Yeah, he's uh, a smart performer from South Africa. Uh, group one winner fairly early in the season, was a little disappointing. Came back nicely at the death of the season to just get beaten a group one again. Um, loves it firm, uh, 9 to 10 furlong specialist really, I think. Um, uh, you know, and a, and a, a, a smart horse, homebred much like him then, uh, in, in Australia. Uh, but certainly a smart individual and if he remains injury free, he will be a factor. I know that it's sort of on a race by race basis, but given your experience of horses who have achieved a similar level in South Africa coming here, can you... Or, or do you have a solid grip of t as to what sort of level they'll make up to in Dubai in comparison to their South African form? Yeah, well, you, you fairly much have to, otherwise it's a waste of, waste of time bringing mm. them. Um, it's very hard comparing crop to crop, but uh, you, you know there's a certain level and standard that you can, you can bring a horse plus a, a, a rating standard as well. Mm. Um, and therefore, what level do you think this horse will reach? What races are you sort of earmarking well, for him? Well, he's obviously uh, going to be aimed at the Jabal Hatter and the um, duty-free um, with a prep or two be between mm. now and then. Uh, but again... He's, he's up to that level. Again, the sort of mantra 
with these horses, I'm assuming, is to sort of peak him as the sort of campaign yes. goes on. So first up, second up, and then bang for the, for the big night. You, you, you know, you'd, you'd hope that he improved through the carnival. I would expect him to, you know, provided he remains injury-free. How Mashuka was a, a consistent Group 1 placed filly uh, back home in, in South Africa for you. By Bernardini, so coming over here, I guess, given what's on the, the page, was the, the obvious move, is that right? Yeah, well, Bernardini, you know, obviously there's no problem with dirt. Mm. And uh, when it comes to the three-year-old fillies, it's really the best opportunities are dirt. Uh, if they don't go, you can always swing them to the two turf races. But um, certainly Brett brought out primarily for the dirt, given a pedigree. Group 1 performances, albeit the form for those Group 1s is pretty ordinary in South Africa right now. But she was very immature. She was probably a little better than that form. Plus, you might think that dirt might be a favourite surface. So, you know, trial and error. Um, she'd be better than the two fillies I had out here last year, and they were just okay. They were competitive. She'd be a, a little level above them. Uh, and when do you get an understanding of whether dirt is for her? Do you, I mean, in terms of her work and her preparation out here, how much sort of work before race day would she have on, on the surface? You know, you can work as much as you like on the surface of this. It doesn't mean anything because at the end of the day, um, it's that mental and race toughness on the night, uh, you know, getting forward, taking kickback um, and dealing, you know, it's, I think Terry Spargo used the words once, uh, it's almost a war of attrition out there, mm. which it is on this dirt track. So you've got to have a horse that's pretty mentally tough. And in Amashuka, you think you've got one? I think so. You know, I think she likes to run forward. Uh, I think she's got a little bit of spunk about her. So. Um, who knows, you know, but uh, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, we, we wait for race day. Uh, obviously, given the kickback, it, it, it's, a, it's a track where uh, some horses can face the, face the dirt and, and, and throw the towel in to a point. It, it, do you look at horses whose run style is sort of prominent, handy, who like to be on speed and go, well, well that's the way we're going to do it out here? I think so. I think it's a characteristic of the track. Um, it's not 100% of the time. I've seen horses come from off the pace when they mm. go ridiculously fast too early. But um, again, it boils down to mental toughness. Horses that can take kickback, um, to, you know, take the early speed and hard speed. Mm. Maybe you don't have the best trip, sit a bit wide and still kick off that. Um, you know, mental toughness, I think, is a, is a big thing and probably soundness of limb too. Mm. Well, if every horse is like soft falling rain, who was pretty mentally tough when yeah. winning a good old Vermont, you'll be pretty happy out here. Well, that's a type you need, definitely. <laughs> Uh, vale Dory is, uh, speaking of uh, a horse you had in the past, off Wally Rain, another horse you had in the past. He was the UAE Triple Crown winner of 2007, Asiatic Boy. Well, uh, he's now producing horses, and you've, you've got one out here called, called Vale Dory. He's an Argentinian filly. Uh, it must be so nice for you as a trainer, given what you achieved with Asiatic Boy, to be able to, to train his offspring as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you certainly um, do your best to get, it, get um, some of his offspring because mm -hmm. you know if, if they can have these characteristics that mm. uh, you've got winners in them. Um, she seems to be a fairly decent filly. Um, I wasn't involved in the purchase in her, so I don't know a hell of a lot about her. Um, uh, I think she switches to dirt. I mean, we're hoping being by Asia Boy yeah. that she'll handle it. I'm convinced she will. Um, so, uh, you know, again, for those three-year-old fillies races, which are not always the strongest, I mean, it tends to always be you know, Godolphin come with a good one and it's whoever, you know, pitches up with something mm. that can take it on. But they always seem to have a nice filly and hopefully we've got, you know, one that can take it to them a little bit. And just touching on the sort of bloodlines, uh, how early on in, as a general rule, do you get to see the sort of characteristics of sort of father and daughter in, in this instance? Well, I said, you know, Are you looking from, for from, from youngsters, you know, if you've, often some of them I've trained the mothers as well. So, um, uh, there's, you know, there can be a bit of both, um, but certainly you do look for characteristics. There's no doubt. Mm. You know, maybe you know similar look to the sire behaviour. I mean, when they work as well. Um, sometimes you yeah. know if they're really carrying the genetics, that that kind of thing comes through. And do you try sort of similar training, and if there was sort of any. Not really. You know, at the end of the day, you look at you look at them as individuals. Um, Certainly, Asiatic Boy was a very, very, very sound horse. You could do exactly what you liked with him. You could work him as hard as you liked. Mm. Um, if he's progeny anything like that, then they'll be all right. Uh, and in what is arguably one of the weaker 
divisions yeah. in terms of strength in depth, you might have a, a decent filling build or to go to war with this, this carnival. That's the thing. It is, a, it is normally a, a strong, I mean, a weak uh, division. You know, it's always Godolphin versus the rest of the world, really. They always bring a nice filly for that. And um, I think in this year, in Al Mashuk and Valdori, we have two mm. nice fillies. Um, albeit Southern Hemisphere, and there's a, there's a fair lump of weight between mm. them normally. But uh, um, I'd like to believe they're going to be very competitive. Uh, finally, I just want to get your thoughts on Liquid Mercury, who's uh, another Cape Derby winner in, in South Africa. Do, do you see this also as more of a staying sort? He's a uh, winner up, up to a mile and a half. Uh, he, you know, obviously, he goes on turf. That's where we bought him off running on the turf. But he's by trip. He's out of a skip away mare. He's a big, strong, dirt looking type horse. Um, we bought him to have a crack at the dirt. Obviously, if he doesn't, we can fall back on uh, a turf. But given his pedigree, I, I'd like to try the dirt. Um, I think the dirt could arguably be weaker than the turf this year. Um, certainly in the handicaps, um, I'm sure that the Mactoom Challenge is always going to be strong. But you know, he's a horse that we'd like to kick off of. Uh, he's a rated 100, I think it is. So you'd like to believe we could win a handicap or two first. And just tell us about his sort of physical makeup. What's he like as a type? Big sort, uh, very big boned, typical type of a dirt looking horse. Um, and, and that's why we bought him with the dirt in mind, you mm. know, given um, we expect it not to be that competitive. So he takes a lot of the boxes for the, for the dirt and the, uh, the luxury you have is that if he, if he doesn't take to it, which would be a surprise, back. you can go back to it and he's already yeah, achieved a high level right. on the turf. So. Well, now on race night, I think is, is mm. what I'm alluding to. <laughs> I can't tell you for sure. Um, what are your hopes for the, for the carnival of 2016? Uh, you know, we don't really come with great expectations. The, the string seems to be in fairly good nick at the moment. A uh, couple, of, couple of nice horses going the right way. Uh, again, it's for me, you know, the carnival's nice, nice to win, but uh, it's a successful carnival if you ever win on World Cup night or you have one or two run huge. Mm. Uh, and that's what's really we gearing ourselves to. And Christoph will be getting out of here soon. You've built up a, a good relationship in recent years sure, with Christoph. No. Christoph is part of the furniture for as long as he wants to be. And um, he'll be coming out here. Mike, best of luck for a successful carnival. Pleasure. Thank you.